Okay, let's look at how to do quiz 11. First question, question 1. 0.13 cubic meter sample of an ideal gas. We're given a volume, 375 times 10 to the third Pascal. That's a pressure. Temperature of 380 Kelvin. We want to know the number of moles. So that's a matter of using the ideal gas equation of state, it looks like. So we're trying to find the number of moles. So since it's an ideal gas, we have PV equals nRT. So P equals pressure, which here is given as 375 times 10 to the third Pascal. Notice here, this is written out as 375 times 103 when I copied and pasted. That's because the superscript did not come through in the formatting, but that's what it was, it was a superscript. So it's wise to remember that if you copy and paste, we're not actually telling you to multiply 375 by 103. V is volume, and here it's given as 0 0.5. 0.013 cubic meters. N is the number of moles, and that's what we're trying to find. R is the ideal gas constant, 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. And T is absolute temperature, Kelvin temperature, and in this case it's 380 Kelvin. We want to find N, so to do that we divide both sides by RT. Now we have a problem. Our pressure is here given in units of Pascal. Our volume is given in units of cubic meters. However, our gas constant is asking for volumes in liters and pressure in atmospheres. So to do this right, we either have to convert our R or we have to convert this. Let's, so let's convert our pressure and our volume to the units asked for. Our pressure needs to convert to atmospheres and our volume needs to convert to liters. One atmosphere, which is what we want, so we'll put that in the numerator. In the denominator, the equivalent of atmospheres, that's 101325 Pascal. So then the Pascals are going to cancel out. And we have 375,000 divided by 101325. I get 3.701 atmospheres for our pressure. Now the volume, we want that in liters. A liter is a volume of a tenth of a meter cube. In other words, it's a cubic decimeter, 10 centimeters on a side. That means that inside this one meter on a side cube, we could pack 10 liter cubes along the width, 10 liter cubes along the length, and 10 liter cubes along the height. In other words, by volume, we're going to have 1,000 liters for one cubic meter, and this gives 13 liters. So now we can use our formula, N equals PV over RT. So our P becomes 3.701 atmospheres. Our V becomes 13 liters. Our R always is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And the temperature is 380 Kelvin. Check the units. Atmospheres cancel. Liters cancel. Kelvins cancel. We're left with moles in the denominator of the denominator, which means that moles are going to come up to the numerator, which is exactly where we want them. In terms of our numbers, 3.701 times 13 divided by the product of 0.028206 times 380. So do the calculatoring. 1.54 and moles is what's left. Question two, lecture demonstration generates 1.06 moles of gas, so we have a number of moles. We have a pressure, we have a temperature. It's in Celsius, so we're gonna have to change it to Kelvin. We want volume. So I think that's everything we need to find what we're trying to find. So for an ideal gas, we have, as always, PV equals NRT. Here we're trying to find volume. We wanna solve for V, and we will end up with V equals NRT over P. So N is given, that's 1.06 moles. R, 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. T is given in Celsius, 19.0 Celsius. Since we're using this in the gas equation, which always takes absolute temperatures, we need to convert this to Kelvin immediately by adding 273.15 to it, 292.15 Kelvin. And then P, the pressure, is 0 0.94 atmospheres. It's wise to check that our formula makes sense and that our units work. Moles cancel, moles in the numerator and the denominator. Atmospheres cancel, Kelvins cancel. We're left with liters, which is what we want. We want a volume, that's good. 1.06 times 0 0.08205 times 292. 
0.15 divided by 0.94, and I end up with 27.03 liters. Which of the following are properties of an ideal gas? Molecules have zero volume. Yes, that's necessary for points. Molecules have zero speed. That doesn't make any sense. They won't be able to collide with any surfaces or exert pressure. If they have zero speeds, that can't be it. Molecules do not interact with each other. Yes, that is one of the stipulations of an ideal gas. Zero mass. No, again, that doesn't make any sense. If they have zero mass, they won't be able to apply a force to a surface when they contact it. Um, so it, the only two that are correct are molecules have zero volume and they do not interact with each other. Question four. Cylinder, a volume, ideal gas, we have a pressure, we have a temperature in Celsius, so that's got to change into Kelvin. Heat at a constant pressure, to a final volume, so it's heating at a constant pressure, that means it's going to expand, and sure enough, the final volume is bigger than the initial volume, 0.423 liters. We want the final temperature. So we're gonna to have to relate temperature, volume, and pressure. We don't know how much stuff we have, so we can't use the ideal gas equation directly as is. We have to find some factors that we can cancel out. Since this specifies it's an ideal gas, we know that PV equals NRT is going to apply. And what do we have in terms of this? We have an initial volume and an initial pressure and initial temperature. We're given a final volume on a final pressure because we know that the pressure is constant so that's also good to know and so we want a final temperature so what we've got is v1 equals 0 0.11 liters um, v2 equals 0 0.423 liters we have pressure one equals 7.8 atmospheres we have pressure two Ah, that's pressure one. And so let's just call this P. We have temperature initial, 168 degrees Celsius. Again, let's immediately convert that to Kelvin. So 168 plus 273.15 is 441.15. That's a pretty high temperature as it is. It looks like we're going to heat it quite a bit. So we're going to get an outlandishly high temperature. That would probably challenge the material's performance of any cylinder. So we're trying to find T2. We can say T equals PV over NR, but that's not going to help us because we don't know what N is. So let's look at things a slightly different way. We know that the constants in this particular situation are N, R, and P. So let's put those all on one side of the equation and see what we get for the other side. So PV, uh, sorry, P over NR equals T over V. All right, so we're dividing both sides by V and we're dividing both sides by NR. And the reason we did this is because this is now constant. The fun thing about this is that the right hand side now, temperature and volume, those are not constant quantities. However, we've just established that they're equal to a quantity that's made up only of constants. So this quantity itself is obviously constant. And that means that anything it's equal to is also a constant. So T over V is constant. In the context of this problem, that gives us a kind of a handy little trick that we can now say that T1 over V1 equals T2 over V2 for any two states that have the same pressure. Essentially what we've done is cancel the pressures out. We're trying to find T2 so we can solve this for T2. T2 equals T1 times V2 over V1. And this makes sense. If it expands, it's got to have a higher temperature for the same pressure. Now we can just plug numbers into this. So T1 is 441.15 Kelvin. V2, that's 0.423 liters. And then V1, is 0 0.11 liters. And notice I didn't even really need to have the liters in here because they're all going to cancel out. So it's just their pure number ratio. And we're gonna get an answer in Kelvin, which is just exactly what we should get. 441.15 times 0.423 divided by 0.11. 
and I get a pretty big number. And the number is in kelvins. Is that our answer? That is not our answer because we want an answer in degrees Celsius. So the way we're going to do that is to convert our Kelvin temperature to Celsius temperature. And the way we do that is to subtract out 273.15. So 1696.42 minus 273.15. And I get 1423.3. So 1423 degrees Celsius. Did I cheat? I did not cheat. I thought I hit, I thought I hit uh, true. I guess I must not have hit it, but I got all the science part right. So there's that.